Well, I guess I have to go vintage for this video right here because I wanted to do a live stream on 205 Live and how much of a disaster it was. But, you know, Google Hangouts wasn't working and then OBS was just being a piece of shit. So I just decided, eh, go old school with this fucking video. Why not? Just why not? You know, 205 Live. I was going to give it a chance. I was like, you know what? The Cruiserweights they haven't done shit on WWE television as it is. But let's just see what they do on 205 Live. And oh my god. What a disaster of a show WWE 205 Live was. What what a piece of shit that WWE put out there. Now, all the hardcore fans have been tricked into thinking that this is awesome and this is great. But for me, as a hardcore fan, I'm not being tricked. I'm not falling for the WWE's bullshit. I've fallen for their bullshit for so many years, I'm not going to fall for it again now. This was other crap. And really, to be honest, it's about damn time we stop blaming WWE for the fail of the Cruiserweight division. And honestly, we should. It's like annoying how like we protect these Cruiserweights. We're always like, oh no, it's not the Cruiserweights' fault. It's the WWE's fault for why the Cruiserweights are not over. This is why. Blah, 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 blah. No, I think it's about damn time we start blaming these fucks. The actual professional wrestlers, the Cruiserweights themselves. On why in the blue fuck the cruiserweights are not over. Because holy shit. I haven't seen a much more boring group of human beings in my life. And don't, it, don't and I know all these fucking cruiserweight defenders are going to come out of the woodworks and say that I'm just hating just to hate. But really, to be honest, who's exciting here? Which people in this bunch of idiots are exciting? Jack Gallagher, I'll give you that. Rich Swan can dance. But who's exciting? Who's a character? None of these fucks are characters. They're all fucking boring piece of shit. And we're going to go over here and keep blaming the WWE for their faults. When really, to be honest, we should be blaming these fucks for not being better. I don't give a fuck how good they are in the ring. Because we should, we have proven time and time again, in ring doesn't fucking matter. Because it fucking mattered that all these people that went to the SmackDown live taping would have stayed. They would have stayed afterwards to watch these fucks wrestle, but no, they were like, we saw what we wanted, we're leaving. Pretty much what this show showed was just like what the independents look like in a bigger arena. That's what this show showed. It looked bad, it was disgusting. And I'm tired of freaking always having to defend the fucking wrestlers because of WWE. I'm tired of it. I get it. Some wrestlers have been fucked up by the WWE numerous time after time after time after time. But seriously, with these cruiserweights being so fucking dull and so fucking boring, is that the WWE's fault? No! The thing about the cruiserweights that got everyone all amped up was the WWE put a placebo in your brain with the goddamn cruiserweight classic. That's what they did. They made you believe that the cruiserweights would be awesome if they were on the main roster. And then look at what happened. When they got to the main roster, they couldn't connect. And is that the WWE's fault? Somewhat, but it's also the performer's fault. How many times do we say Roman Reigns sucks? How many of you fucks on the internet say Roman Reigns sucks, he doesn't know how to connect with the fans, I don't know why WWE pushes this idiot. So how come I can't say most of these cruiserweights suck, they have no personality, they have no way to connect with the fans, and all they're there for is to do fucking flippy flips and whoopty doops, and pretty much, if I want to see that, I'll just go watch our WWE World Champion AJ Styles, or I'll go watch Seth Rollins, wrestlers that actually have characters I can give a fuck about! So, so it's okay when it's a wrestler you, 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 don't like. It's okay for you to say they don't connect with the fans, they suck. But when it comes to darlings that you like, you can't admit they suck. But these cruiserweights, most of them fucking suck, minus Jack Gallagher. He was the only fuck that I gave a fuck about. The rest of them are a dribbling drool of shit. You want me to sit here and fucking keep defending these cruiserweights? No! The fact that they couldn't keep that audience entertained for the hour that they were there was ridiculous. 
Rich Swan, though, and Brian Kendrick had a great ending main event match. Who cares? This match did not lead up to anything. The build up to this match was that Rich Swan beat Brian Kendrick a long time ago on Raw. Rich Swan became number one contender. Brian Kendrick defended his cruiserweight title. That's the story. What the, what the makes you think that this match should have been epic? It shouldn't have. If anything, they, all they did was just go out there just to say, hey, look at us. We're putting on a great performance. Praise us. Make us feel pretty. It's like that one ugly girl just dresses up pretty one day for no fucking reason. It's not prom. It's not fucking senior ball. It's not a big dance. It's not a wedding day. She just decided to go out there and do a bunch of stupid shit just for a fucking sake of it. Just like she got pretty on a fucking Tuesday at fucking school when she didn't need to. And you're sitting here like, oh, but the matches were going to give the fuck I'm great matches. Not just because they wrestle it. A great match is with all the story and the elements leading up to it that make you feel awesome and epic. See the fucking revival versus DIY with the freaking storyline heading into that match. Do you think everyone's calling that a great match just for the sake of calling it a great match? No! The storyline between DIY and the revival is the reason why it's a great match. <sighs> Miz and Dolph Ziggler, earlier this year, or not earlier this year, last month, two months ago, no mercy, I don't give a fuck. They had a great match, but it was it was it because they just went out there and had a random great match? No, it was a story and everything like that. I'm tired of defending the Cruiserweight. I'm tired of saying it's the WWE's fault why these guys aren't over. No, it's their fault. It's their fault. Why they're not over. I'm tired of always having to fucking defend the goddamn wrestlers in any situation. Because you know what? Throughout the bullshit that I've seen Daniel Bryan get put through in his WWE career, guess what? At least he was still able to keep himself over. Throughout all the bullshit that I've seen CM Punk go through in his WWE career, guess what? At least CM Punk could keep himself over. Yeah, they've been screwed by WWE, both Daniel Bryan and CM Punk, but they managed to fight through the BS at the end of the day. Wasn't like Daniel Bryan and CM Punk let the BS hold them down for very long. There are other wrestlers too that I've seen fight through the BS and still stay over. Get the crowd reacted, make the crowd care about them a little bit. Despite what you want to think about Roman Reigns, at least Roman Reigns still gets a reaction from the crowd. At least the crowd feels a certain way about this idiot that makes people want to give a reaction to him. Sure, it's the wrong reaction, but at least he's doing something to make the people care so much. Kevin Owens is going through some bullshit right now. Look at him. He's fighting through that bullshit and he's doing a good job with it. Same with AJ Styles. Freaking facing Dick's work. And Ambrose and shit. I am tired of saying it's always the WWE's fault. Maybe we should actually be blaming the talent for being so lackluster and so fucking boring instead of always blaming the goddamn WWE. Because yes, the WWE hasn't done the Cruiserweights any favors, but really, have the Cruiserweights really done anything for the WWE to prove their merch movers or their money makers? Because at the end of the day, no matter what the fuck you say, this is a business, and with the business, you got to make one thing, one thing only, and that is dollar signs, money, 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 that's what you got to do. You got to make that money, money. This is what matters in a business, is money, 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 money. And so far, all the cruiserweights are doing is not making money. They are doing nothing of that nature. They are just being boring, bland, and dumb. Hate all you want. I am ready for the fucking hate of the YWC. I don't give a fuck. Because ultimately, when I watched this show, I wasn't blaming the WWE one bit. Yeah, they did a stupid decision trying to play this off after SmackDown Live. Like, yeah, you, SmackDown Live is alright. 
But really, to be honest, you expect fans to stay to watch these idiots? Can't blame the fans. They don't know who these idiots are. Why should they care about these idiots? Because these idiots haven't done anything to make the fans care. Don't say, oh, WWE doesn't publicize them enough. They had a fucking network of Cruiserweight Classic. They had a whole month on the network. They had bios. They had profile. If fans really cared, they would have gone out there and actually did the research on them. Guess what? Fans just don't care. They just don't care. The only people who care are the people who won't fork over their money to fucking do anything about it. That are the only people who care about professional wrestling nowadays are the fuckers that won't fork over any money to do something about it. They won't fork over their own hard-earned cash to go to any wrestling event. They won't fork over any of their goddamn money to do anything. All they want to do is just bitch about it. And everyone's going to be like, oh, Trish, you're just one of those fans. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I am. But at least 